fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rat of the plains fought crime and criminals throughout the western United States. But he was more than a champion of law and order. He knew that the future of the new country depended on a steadfast adherence to the ideals of the pioneers. And it was he, more than any other man, who guided the West to the fulfillment of its destiny. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Argus Falls! Hey, oh, Silver! Away! Well, the bell in the tower of the church at Argus Falls calls the faithful to Sunday service. The Reverend Matthew Whitcomb stood at the entrance, greeting each new church member. But when he caught sight of an elderly, gray-haired rancher tethering his horse to the hitch rail in the front yard, he excused himself and hurried toward the newcomer. Ben. Uh, good morning, Parson. Ben, I have just a moment to spare, but I'd like to speak to you. Sure, go ahead. It's about the mortgage. Huh? <laughs> sure. You ain't worrying about that, are you? Figure I was aiming to foreclose. No, but I... Well, then why mention it? Go on in there and get limbered up for your sermon. <laughs> you, you ain't gonna lose your church on account of me. No, Dan, there's more to it than that. Hmm? You're doing a very fine thing, but the church owes you money. You needed it. Me? Need cash? Oh, <laughs> go on with you. <laughs> Who told you a fool thing like that? Oh, I, your I, wife told me. But, uh... Don't blame her. She didn't realize it. She simply mentioned what it cost you when the blizzard destroyed those steers you'd been winter grazing. She didn't know you'd already told me how important to you it was to sell those steers in the spring. I, well, I've been putting two and two together. You did lose that herd, didn't you? Well, I... Come, Pam. Yeah, sure. But just the Have same... Have you uh, any other way to get money? I will. Uh, maybe a loan. What on? Oh, there's the ranch. Then you mean well, but it's hopeless. You've forgotten you told me the ranch is mortgaged to Sloan at Hill City, just as the church is mortgaged to you. Now, now hold on, Parson. No, Dan, I won't. If you aren't paid, Sloan won't be paid. If the church can't pay its debt, you'll be sold out. You've been splendid, Dan. You've done more for the church than any other man in the community. I can't tell you how I appreciate your kindness. But it's out of the question for you to be permitted to sacrifice yourself. No, Parson, why don't you let me worry about that side of it? Because the promise to pay is a moral as well as a legal obligation. The church should never fail to keep its word. That's an example it can't afford to set. You must get your money. You're an honest man, Parson. Thank you, Dan. And I guess you mean what you said. But now, 
suppose you answer me something. Where is this money to pay me going to come from? It will be provided. By the folks still attending church? They'll contribute what they can. Sure, but how much is that? Just look. We'll put the figure high and say there's 15 or 20 that goes to meeting regular. But who are they? Folks with the least cash to spare in the whole district round. Good people, though, Dan, and generous. Hmm, can they give what they ain't got? Well, Why, I... of course they can. And folks that could afford to give, folks like Keith and Flanders and Logan, they, they don't care a hoot. Dan, I think you're wrong. <laughs> August Falls is prosperous. In a time of prosperity, it's easy for men and women to forget the church to which they returned in their time of trouble. Person, you never said a truer word. But at heart, they're good people. As good as those who have remained faithful. Well, that's where we got different opinions. Perhaps. But if they've forgotten the church, I wonder if the fault hasn't been mine more than theirs. I wonder if I haven't failed them in some way I don't realize. Failed them? Parson... If you'd have been paid cash for all the things you'd done for folks around about, you'd be the richest fellow in the county. <laughs> Scarcely that. Yeah, yeah, you would. No, I've not even, even attempted half that could be done. But that's beyond the point. We were speaking of the mortgage and how you'd be paid. Well, how will I? Tomorrow I'll call on a few of the leaders of the community. You will, huh? Yes, I'll explain our difficulty. Probably they haven't realized how short of funds we are. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> I'm sure that once they know the church must have their help, they'll give generously. And I suppose you'll be polite to the skunks, even though they've treated you like dirt. Hmm? <laughs> A minister can't indulge false pride, Dad. Well, I'll tell you something. Yes? You got two mighty fine things. Plenty of nerve and a heap of faith. Well, I... But to try to pry cash from those gents... You need a couple of other things. What then? A cold forty-five and a mask. <laughs> now, come on. Folks inside's waiting for you. We'll talk this over some other day. The next afternoon, the minister started his campaign, but his first call met with no success. Well, Mr. Keith, I'll have to be getting along. I'm sorry you feel you won't be able to help us. Oh, gosh, Parson, I'm as sorry as you are. But I reckon you savvy how it is. You know, cash is tight just now, and there's expenses to meet, and, uh, and well, I guess I don't need to explain. <laughs> of course, lad. You will try to attend the services, though, won't you? Oh, you bet, sure. Uh, might even get there Sunday. Good. I'll look for you. Uh-huh. Good day. So long, Parson. Yes. Huh? Oh, it's you. Jed, I... The door was open. I couldn't help hearing. Well? And something happened. You told me just last week how much money you'd banked. Did I? Hey, what of it? But just now, the minister... Huh? He... Oh. <laughs> Heard me tell him I was broke, huh? Are we, Jeb? Well, I should hope to smile we ain't. Then why did Why you... didn't I say I'd give the church some towards the mortgage? Yes. Well, why in thunder should I? What good's the church to us? We are honest. We keep the laws, don't we? You think it takes a possum to keep us straight? No, but... But nothing. That folks go to church and need it. And them that go are the ones to pay. But we are going next Sunday, aren't we, Jed? I've wanted to go for so long. I'll finish my new dress We and... ain't going. Oh, but you said... Oh, we... going it, didn't I have to say something to get them out of the house? Huh. Sunday's I got more important things to do than to go to meeting. But you... And I reckon you have, too. Now, let me alone. I don't aim to be pestered. Excuse me, Parson. I'm in a hurry. And you won't contribute, Mr. Flinders. Sorry. But just to say... Small... Didn't you hear me say I was sorry? What in blazes more do you want? It's not for me, Mr. Logan. It's for the church. And I'm asking for only what you can spare. Can't spare a dime. But surely you I'm can... a poor man, Parson. If you don't believe it, just look at my books. Why, I ain't made over 20,000 once in the past three years. Come on inside. Go to bed and try to sleep. Forget what they said. I can't, Alice. Oh, you look so tired. I was so sure. I thought if I could just explain to oh, them. Don't think about it. But the money, Alice, how can I help thinking about it? Where will I get it? Maybe you'll think of a way in the morning. I hope so. Of course you will. Now come along. I... No, not just yet. You haven't eaten. 
Would you like a lunch? I'm not hungry. Oh, you have to eat something. I'll make some sandwiches. What would you like? I don't know. It doesn't matter. I know. I'll use what's left of the roast. I'll call you when they're ready, Matt. Very well. Don't lose faith. But the Lone Ranger. I heard what you said. But how would my... I came to ask our young Bob Willis was getting along since we exposed Clayton. Seems fortunate that I did. I didn't know you were within a thousand miles. Santo and I just arrived. But what... How much does the church need? More than five thousand dollars. That much? We borrowed to buy all that land running west of the church clear to the river. We had expected to get a revenue from it. We had expected to rent it to cattlemen needing more grazing land. But this year we couldn't. There was a drought. I see. The five thousand's a lot of money. Too much, I'm afraid. No, but five... it's a lot of money, but you'll get it. Here, Silver. You mean you'll help us? Of course. But how? At this moment, I'm not sure. But if it can be managed, you'll not only get every dollar needed... Yes? You'll get it from the very men who just refused you. You have my promise. Wait just a moment. If Toto's waiting. You'll see me again. But what have Adios. you... Come on, Silver. Come on! Matt, that horseman, who was he? Alice. What did he want? The money. He promised the money. Promised it? Every dollar of it. But who in the world are you talking about? I don't know. I've never heard his name in all my life. Uh, Matt. Yes? Matt, uh... Are you all right? All right. <laughs> Alice, I couldn't be finer. The Lone Ranger drew his great stallion to a stop beside the trail where Tonto was waiting. Oh, oh, there, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh. You see him? Yes, Kimosabe. And found work for us to do. What that? Certain men in Argus Falls need a lesson. Ah. Uh -huh. And we'll teach it to them. And what we do. I thought it over while riding here. I ah. have an idea that may turn the trick. We'll talk it over and decide. Ah. If it looks practical, we'll get to work at once. And we'll find a place to camp. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. I'm Silver. Away! When they had made camp, the Lone Ranger discussed his idea with Tonto and worked out the details of his plan. Then, for several days, he and Tonto busied themselves gathering information. At the end of that time, they met again. Looks as though we're on the right track, Kimasami. Uh -huh. Everyone I've talked to agrees that Jed Keith, Asa Flinders, and Red Logan are not only the wealthiest men in the community, but its leaders as well. Mm, that's right. And from what we've learned of their characters, I think we can be sure they'll take our bait. Them bad fellers. Not at heart, Tonto. Them greedy. Because the same things happened to them that has happened to others before them. The minister tells me when the church was first organized, they were among its most sincere members. Mm. Then the cattle trails were opened. Men began to make money. Cattle values rose. And as Flinders and Keith and others like them began to enjoy prosperity, they gradually forgot the church had given them the courage and faith that had kept them loyal to the West during the early days when they had so little. Mm, that's right. When people behave toward the church something that children do toward their parents. When all is going well, they feel their parents aren't needed. Mm. When trouble begins, they run to their parents at once. Huh. Engine, same way. Of course. And as for the greed of Keith and the others, I doubt they realize they're greedy. They no doubt think of themselves as men taking only what is due them. Maybe you're right. I'm sure I am. The minister agrees with me. A generous man can give way to greed and never know it. Each step in the path seems so small he doesn't realize its significance. A man can change so gradually that he'll swear he's not changed at all. Uh -huh. And that's why I'm certain that they can be made to see clearly what they've become... That's all that'll be needed. Now what we do? Now we need someone who lives far enough from Argus Falls so it'll seem natural for him to dislike making a trip here. But not so far that Keith and the others can't learn about him if they make inquiries. Uh -huh. Moreover, he must have a good standing, and he must be a man who knows and trusts us. Now, Tonto, who is there like that within a week's ride or so of Argus Falls? No. Maybe woman. A woman? Uh. Mustang Mag. Mag, of course. He's well known, and she do whatever we ask without question. Ah. Saddle scout, Tonto. You're riding to Mags at once. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. One day, nearly three weeks later, Jed Keith hurried to the sheriff's office. Stopped in front of it, looked up and down the street almost furtively. Then... Sheriff. Huh? Oh, howdy, Jed. Logan or Flinders around? Uh-uh. Looking for them? They been here? Nope. Why? If I ask you some questions, can you keep them to yourself? Uh, what do you mean? Just what I said. Well, what kind of question? I want to find out about somebody. And I don't want you to go letting on I was interested. You ever hear me talking when I shouldn't? Then you won't. Not if I don't have to break the law to keep still. You won't. All right, then. I promise. Shoot. What do you know about a woman called herself Mustang Mag? Hey, where'd you hear about her? Never mind that. You know her? (laughs) Well, I should smile. Quite a character Mag is. Met her a dozen times. Who is she? Well, she's got a ranch over near Pecos. Runs it with a fella called Missouri. Queer old ducky. I ain't got time for gossip. What I want to know is this. If this here Mag claimed to have information weren't generally known, would you believe her? Like a shot. Yeah? Hey, you ain't never lied to me, have you? Say, what's well, that? Well, you could tell me something and I'd believe it. But I'd credit anything Mag said, even before you. That's just to give you an ID. Well, all right. But how would she have special ways of hearing things that nobody else had? That'd depend on what she heard. It ain't none of your business. I'm just asking you. Well, Keith, I can think of one mighty good way she might get such information. What way? Ever hear tell of a masked fellow that rides a horse called Silver? A fellow with a red-skin pard named Tonto? The Lone Ranger. Uh-huh. But I... Mag's his friend. You know that for sure? Well, everybody around Pecos knows it. He's enough her friend to put her onto a good thing if he learned of it? I think he might. That's all I wanted to know. Now, hold on. Remember, you promised huh? me. You ain't to say a word of what I ask you. Sure, well, but... don't forget. <laughs> now, what's got into him? At the same time, the Lone Ranger drew Silver to a stop before the small parsonage that stood next to the church. Oh, oh, there, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh. Stay there, boy. I saw you right there. What's... Come out here. What's the hey, matter? close the door. What is it? What happened? You're going to have some callers before the day's out. Callers? Jed Keith, Asa Flinders, and Red Logan. Why? They want to buy the land the church owns. I don't understand. It's not necessary that you should. Just remember one thing. Don't deal with any one of them alone. Wait until they're all here before talking terms. I have no authority to sell that land. Of course not, but the members of your church would authorize the sale if you suggested it, wouldn't they? Perhaps. Keith and Flinders and Logan know that, too. But can't you explain? Can't you tell me... The less you know about this, the better. But what is... You trust me? Will you do as I ask? You know I will. That's all that counts. Keep just one thing in mind. Settle nothing until they've all arrived. I won't. Don't worry. I made you a promise. Tonight, I'll keep it. Come on, Silver. Come on. Later that afternoon, Aza Flinders called on the sheriff and put the same questions to him that Keith had asked. Well, Flinders, if that tells you what you want to know, you're welcome. But why in thunder are you making such a secret out of it? Can't explain now. Tell you all about it later on. But if you and your deputy there open your mouths before this is out, I'll have you hide. We won't. Good night. Well, I'll be doggone. <laughs> can you make out what's got into them fellers' texts? You can search me. Keith, then Logan, then Flinders. Each one of them asking the same questions. Each one making us promise we won't talk. And everyone acting like he was scared to death, the other two would guess what he was up to. I'd give a heap to know. Didn't dare mention the others that they asked. I wonder if maybe... What the mask? Come on, Dan. Keep your shirt on, Sheriff. Dan, what are you doing with a mask, fella? I'll answer that. You can't Keep get... your hands clear of those holsters. Take it easy, Tex. All right, let's have an explanation. <laughs> I'll, I'll let the mask man tell it, Sheriff. <laughs> And you take my advice and listen. Well? You've been wondering why three men called on you today with questions about Mustang Mag. Well, I'll How'd be... How'd you know about that? They aren't aware of it, but I sent them here. Huh? You know what they're up to? I do. And I'd like to know just what your game is, too. You'll find that out at the same time. Stranger, who are you? Never mind that. But... Uh... I'll tell you. Yeah? He's the Lone Ranger. Take a look out of your side window at that horse of his, if you don't believe it. If you think there's two such critters, you're local. The Lone Ranger. Sheriff, 
That's the hombre you said was friends with Mustang Mag. Yeah. Well, what about it, Sheriff? What about what? You want to learn what's behind all this? I sure do. And leave your deputy in charge of the office and come with us. Oh, say, why No, you can't... don't, Tex. One of us has got to stay behind and it ain't going to be me. Stranger, wherever we're headed for, let's get going. <laughs> Jed Keith, after his call on the sheriff, had made a hasty trip to the bank where he withdrew a large part of his savings, then had hurried home, saddled and sent his mount at a gallop for the parsonage. In the meantime, the Reverend Matt Whitcomb and his wife wondered about the Lone Ranger's message. What could he have meant? I wish I knew. What could that be? This may be one of them in the mass man told me to expect. I'll answer this. One moment. Oh, Mr. Keith. Parson. We gotta talk. Yes, but, uh, you willing to talk business? Yeah, we. Will you excuse the service? Of course, Matt. Oh, pardon, ma'am. I, I didn't see you. <laughs> That's all right. I'll be in the kitchen, Matt. Uh, what is it? How much is a mortgage a church has to pay? Five thousand six hundred dollars, to be exact. Why? Show me the land it owns, and I'll give you enough for a clear title and a profit besides. That fair enough? What do you want to buy? I don't need that land, is all. You folks need the cash. Now, let's get together. But, Mr. Keith, I can't sell that land. Just say you'll get the church folks to sell. That's good enough for me. Yes, but... Uh, uh, pardon me. Come in. Parson, I... Keith! What in blazes are you doing here? That's just what I was going to ask you, Logan. Parson, was he trying to buy that church land? Yes, he... Well, I'll top any offer he makes you. I seen you skunks in here. Fenders! Thought you was going to put one over on me, didn't you? Well, it'll be a cold day before you ever get the head of Ace, Ace of Flinters. Parson, tell these fellas to clear out. Then me and you'll have a good no, talk. No, be quiet. Me, please. I tell you that Mr. I'm going to have... I'm telling you, Flinders. Let me understand you. You wish to purchase the land the church owns between town and the river, is that it? Yes, yes Parson. That's that's right, Parson. Now, would you mind telling me just why you want this land? After all, it's rather strange you should all be interested now when you never showed you wanted it before. You've got to pay off a mortgage, don't you? With what I'll give you, you'll have that and plenty to spare. I'll give you enough over to build the finest meeting house in the whole west. Twenty thousand. Twenty-one. Go ahead, you fools. Yes, go ahead and bid it up. When you're finished, I'll name my price. Oh, you will. Please. Please. Any price you make. My wife. Matt, this was just brought to the back door. It's marked important. I thought you'd better see it. A letter? Yes. Thank you, then. Please excuse me while I read this. Sure, I can wait. Keith, you're just wasting your time. You might as well turn around and go back home. Yeah? Well, I'll tell you something, Logan. You just can... a second. Yeah, what do you got to say? We're acting like idiots. Ain't no doubt but we're all here for the same thing. Now, it ain't going to profit us to keep heisting the price till it's all out of reason. I'd like to have had the land for myself if I could. I can't for the right price, though. So I'm willing to go in with you gents and split the deal three weeks. Fair way? Friends, I don't... Gentlemen... There'll be no deal. Huh? What? I, I have here a letter from Mustang Mag. Mustang Mag? Let me see that. Wait. Well, it is her writing, sure enough. Leastways, it's the same as in the letter I got. You got a letter, but she wrote to me. It was me she Please wrote. Please let me finish. Well? I depended upon a friend to help the church get the funds it needed. It seems he's gone too far. Mag admits here that she wrote you at his direction... There'll be no railroad built to Argus Falls, gentlemen. If there is, there's no reason to believe it will want the land owned by the church for its right-of-way. I'm sorry to say it, but you've been tricked. I can't be a party to the deception. Sergeant Parson! Where's the skunker done it? He'll... Right here. Who's this? A mess, man. If I'd let you go ahead and buy that land, even knowing the truth, it would have been just what you deserved. Look here, mister. Keep still. Matt was too honest to take advantage of a trick to profit by it, but you weren't. Mag wrote each one of you asking you to act as her agent in the purchase of that land. Instead, you were going to take advantage of what she'd written and buy it for yourself. We were And you not. call yourselves honest. This is going to make a pleasant story for your neighbors. Three men too poor to contribute to the church bidding thousands for its land. Three men who call themselves honest attempting to cheat a woman. Wait, mister. No, now, hold on. And if you're depending on Matt to keep silent, it'll do you no good. I brought other witnesses to this. They heard everything that went on in here. Dan, Sheriff, come in here. Evening, gents. Yes, sir. <laughs> we heard a plenty. <laughs> Just wait till I tell this down at the cafe. No. Why, sure, Parson. You'll we... say nothing at all. Sheriff, you and Dan must promise me this 
This has been an unfortunate mistake. I won't have these men suffer for it. Uh, I think you're acting foolish, Parson. But of course, if you insist... Just a second. Huh? I still got something to say about this. The masked man was right. Me and Logan and Flinders looked pretty shabby on this deal compared with the parson. We'd have bought the land all right. And we'd have been willing to cheat Mag. The parson could have took our money, but just keep him shut. He didn't. But I kind of wished he had. We had it coming to us. Say, you mean that, Keith? Right now, I feel a heap like a fool. But it took something like this to open my eyes. And I ain't asking nobody to keep still about this just to save my feelings. I'd hoped you'd say that, Keith. Well, I do. And I ain't finished. No? That mortgage is going to be paid off. I figure Logan and Flinders and me can pay it between us. But if they ain't got the sense to know, when they ought to be ashamed... I'll pay the whole thing myself. Like fun, you will. By thunder, Jed Keith, you ain't the only one that's got the nerve to admit when he's wrong. You ain't giving the church a penny more than I am. Well, agreed. I can't believe this. You mean the entire amount you'll pay it all? <laughs> you can bet we will. We can't be made to look like idiots without having some rights. Think of what it is, and you'll get your checks right here and now. I wish I knew how to thank you. Don't. But you ought to be as cussing us out. <laughs> Anyhow, Parson, it's the mash fella you ought to be a thanking. I, I know he meant well. Meant I... well? Why, doggone it. It was him had time to give that letter from Mustang Mag to your wife. He knew you'd tell these fellas the truth. He never had no notion to let them buy that land. What's what that? Then he planned everything. <laughs> and it worked out just as he figured. <laughs> Just heard as a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.